In this video series, we will learn how to build a 3D game in Unity from scratch, even if you have no prior programming experience. So let's take a look at the game we will build throughout the series. So when we start the game, we have this very simple starting screen with the title and the button. The starting screen is not beautiful, but it fulfills its purpose. And when we click start, we get to the first level. Now, when you build your very first games in Unity, it makes sense to just use simple shapes for the different objects, for the player and the enemies and so on, because 3D animations are a whole different topic and it's not so simple to understand. I will cover 3D animations in separate videos in the future, but in this video series here, we will just use a simple capsule for the player and some cubes and spheres for the different game objects. So our game has background music and we have sound effects, for example, when we jump. And these red cubes here are enemies. So when we touch an enemy from the side, like in Super Mario, we die. And then we respawn a moment later. We can kill an enemy by jumping on it. And as you hear, we can also collect these coins here, which are counted in the top left corner. This is the finish line of the game. And when we go through it, we get to the next level, which is slightly uh, more difficult. And here the game works the same. Oops, I died on purpose, of course. And then we have to get to the finish line again. As you can see, it's a lot of fun. And I died. Let's try this again. And I only created two levels for this video series, but of course you can create as many levels as you want. And it's starting to get embarrassing because I can't beat my own game. But I'm doing some pro gamer moves and then I collect the last coin and I'm in the finish line. And since I only set up two levels, we now get to the end screen where we can quit the game. But of course you can add as many levels as you want. And as I already said, there are no prerequisites for this tutorial. So you can watch this even if you have no programming experience whatsoever. I also have a separate tutorial where we uh, learn how to create a 2D game. And both this tutorial and the 2D one are standalone tutorials, so you don't have to watch the other one. First, you can just watch whatever you are more interested in, building a 2D game first or a 3D game first. But I recommend that you watch both because they complement each other and it's good to know how to do both, right? And if you already watched my 2D tutorial before, leave me a comment below because I'm really interested in seeing who already watched the other one. And also you will find the GitHub link for this whole game in the description box under the video in case you want to download it from there or take another look at the code. And of course, before we can start creating our games, we have to install Unity first if you haven't yet. So if you already did this in the 2D tutorial, you can skip this part, otherwise just follow along. We go to unity.com and if you watch this tutorial in the future, the website might look a bit different, but somewhere here you will find the download link for Unity. At the moment, we have to click on get started and then we get here. Now, don't get scared by this. Those are big numbers, but we don't have to pay anything to uh, start using Unity. When we click on the individual tab, we can see that the personal license is free. This is free until you make more than 100k a year from your game. So this is a very generous limit. And here we click on get started again. And we click on returning users because we don't need this stuff here on the left. So we click on go here and then we should get to the download link. So of course we have to accept the terms of service after reading them, of course. Then we have the same information here again, not more than 100K and so on. And then we click on download Unity Hub and then you uh, go ahead and install this. The Unity Hub looks like this. It's basically the manager for your different Unity projects and your Unity installations. And first of all, it will require you to create an account and log in. So go ahead and do that. You can use your Google account for that. And then we need to activate a license. You can do this here in the settings under license management. And then you click on activate new license if you haven't done it yet. And as I already said, we can use the personal license so we don't have to pay anything. Then we select this one here, most likely. Click on done and activate this license, which I've already done before. Then we have to install 
Unity itself, because again, this is just the manager basically. So we click on installs and I've already uh, two different versions installed. You only need one though. So yeah, what you do is you click on add and then you keep the default settings selected. Um, the LTS version up here under recommended rele release will most likely be selected in your case. Keep it like this. LTS means long-term support. So uh, there are not too many changes in this or something like this. You keep this selected and click on next. And here you can keep the default settings selected as well, which should be documentation, which are basically, uh, which is basically the manual for Unity. And you also keep Microsoft Visual Studio Community 2019 selected. Visual Studio is a so-called IDE, an integrated development environment. It's a program where we write code in later, when we write our own scripts. You can also use a different IDE if you already have one installed that supports C Sharp. But I really recommend using this one here because the interoperability with Unity is very good. We have nice auto completion, we have some shortcuts that help us and so on. So I really recommend that you keep this selected. I don't know which one you will see here when you uh, install Unity on Mac. They probably also have some default IDE that's already selected and go ahead and use this one here on Windows and also probably on Linux. We uh, keep Microsoft Visual Studio selected. We also don't select Android build support and so on. I will cover building your games for mobile and so on later and you can always install this at a later time. So this is not a decision you have to make for your life. So then we click on next. We uh, agree uh, to the terms and conditions. Click on done and then it will go ahead and install this. This will download now and it will take a while. So uh, just wait until it's finished. Your PC is not broken. It, it's just a big file. So, but I've canceled this download because I already have the latest version installed at the moment. And then we uh, create our project here. So we go to projects. Click on new and here we have to select a template. We want to build a normal 3D game. So we keep 3D here selected, which just sets up some default settings later. Now, even if we select a 2D game, we could still make it a 3D game and vice versa. So this is not final. Then we have to give our project a name. So let's call it coding in flow 3D tutorial. Give this project a location where it will be saved. I will keep it like this. And then we click on create. And then after a short moment, we are inside Unity. Now your Unity program most likely has the dark theme activated by default. I use the light theme here just because the light theme is a bit better visible and the text is a bit better readable on video for this tutorial. If you also want to use the light theme, you can go to edit preferences and here under general you can uh, choose the editor theme you can set this to either light or dark i will keep it like this and of course this looks scary the first time you open it it's a big tool with many different options here available but give it a few days or weeks and you will already feel at home here so uh, no worries on the left in the hierarchy here you can see that we have this sample scene opened by default which is created when we are create a brand new project. A scene is basically a level in Unity and we can put different stuff into the scene later. Of course, right now the scene is empty. We only have this light here, which you also can see here on the left in the hierarchy, direction light and the camera, which is later what puts something on the screen when we actually start the game. But more on this in the next part. And you can uh, move all these different windows wherever you want however you like it you can split them up you can put this on the left for example but if you've messed up your layout like i just did and you just want to get back to the default settings you can click up here on layout and then click on default and it will reset it back to uh, how it was in the beginning so as i already said we will start building our game in the next part but there is one more preparational step I want to do because by default the interoperability with Visual Studio is not set up properly. Maybe this changes in the future, but right now we have to do one more step. We have to go to edit here and to the preferences again. Then we click on external tools and make sure that Visual Studio Community is selected here. 
Maybe when you watch this in the future, it's a newer version. Just select whatever is written here. And then you check these two boxes. Generate blah, blah, blah files for embedded packages and local packages. And then you click on regenerate project files. Keep the rest as it is. And then when we later write code in Visual Studio, we should have proper auto completion and proper helping tools and shortcuts. It's not necessary. If it doesn't work, you can still follow in this tutorial. Also, if you use a different IDE than Visual Studio, but it just makes everything a bit easier for you when you code by yourself in the future. So don't worry if you don't have the exact same settings, you will still be able to follow along and understand everything. Absolutely no problem. Okay, and then I hope I see you in the next part where we will start building our game. Um, if you are excited for this tutorial, please leave a comment below. Just let me know you are excited. It really motivates me. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel, of course, so you don't miss any future tutorials. And then we see you in the next part. Take care.